Assalamualaikum. We will start this lecture with section 11.7, cylindrical and spherical coordinates. We have already seen in calculus one the polar coordinate system. And so instead of describing a point in 2D as x, y coordinates, you describe in terms of r, the radius, which means the distance to the origin, and the angle that it makes with the positive x-axis, the ray to the point from origin. Similarly, in 3D, we have, uh, other than the rectangular coordinate systems, we have the cylindrical and spherical two coordinate systems. And just like we saw in 2D, sometimes one coordinate system is better for certain kinds of objects and shapes than another one. It makes certain descriptions of things easier. Okay, let's start with the cylindrical coordinate system. The way it works is, you have the your 3D coordinate system at y, z and x axis and you have a point P right with coordinates x, y, z let me see some x, y, z values what you do in the cylindrical coordinate system is you project this point onto the x, y flow okay, called P prime P prime's coordinates will be same x, same y, where 0 is the z. And then you make a you know a ray right from the origin of the xy plane to this point. And what you do is you look at this angle this ray makes with the positive x-axis. And you call that angle theta. And the length of this ray. Call it R. So this is just like the polar coordinate system, but embedded in the 3D world. And the Z coordinate you keep it as Z. So what happens is this is your rectangular system and this is your cylindrical system. Point XYZ becomes R theta. Z. The Z, the height for the floor is kept the same, but then the other the two things are expressed by R and theta. Now, what's the relationship to go back and forth between them? You know this very well. Uh, if you make this triangle, right, um, with this theta and let's see, in the x y plane, right, this was the point P naught, a P prime and theta is this angle. So if you make this triangle, right, and this is your R, what are the relationships that help you go back and forth? So you have that, okay, of course, Z is Z, right? And then X is R cosine theta, uh, X is R cosine theta, and y is r r sine theta. Okay? So if you know your cylindrical coordinates, sorry, so this one, this is the transformation for going this way. Knowing your cylindrical coordinates, how to extract the rectangle coordinates. What about the transformation this way? Alright? So what how can you if you know already XYZ, how can you get the R? You know that R has a relationship r square is equal to x square plus y square. This is this triangle. This is your x, this is your y. You do the Pythagoras theorem. So which means r is the square root of x square plus y square. And then tangent of theta would be y over x. Right? So which means theta would be the tangent inverse of y over x or the arc tangent of y over x. And of course, as, I, as we said, the z coordinate doesn't change. So this will be your transformation this way. Um, if you think about it, basically another way to describe cylindrical coordinate is that the 3D point, you look at shadow in the x, y world, and you do the polar coordinate of that shadow, but, but the z coordinate stays as z coordinate. So when did we used to use polar coordinates in 2D? When we want to describe a shape that was symmetric with respect to the origin, 
right? So if you take a shape with respect to the with symmetric to the respect to, uh, symmetric with respect to the origin in the x y plane, and then extend it upwards along the z axis, you will get something which is cylindrical looking. You will get something that's symmetric around the z axis, and that's why the name is called the cylindrical coordinates. In the next uh, mini lecture, continuing from here, we will see examples of surfaces, their equations written in the cylindrical, how we can get the rectangular equation, and vice versa.